Welcome to the 2017 hacking demo, the one password that destroys everything. The proliferation of the cloud, which is really someone else's computer, and cloud services such as Office 365 give us tremendous convenience. We can access our information anywhere in the world from any device. Microsoft makes it super handy to access our emails and our files from anywhere using a web browser. But guess what? So can anyone in the world if they have our username and our password. So our evil plan against our target is to try to find out as many email addresses as we can on the internet because in this instance email addresses are also account names. And then we're going to try to guess those passwords using Office 365 and if we do we'll get full access to their accounts. So let's go to Google and harvest some accounts. One thing that's very interesting is if we simply put our domain name in Google, immediately we see some email accounts without even having to visit any websites. There's an account there. There's another account down there. And of course, we can use social media to search for people who work for the organization and look to see if they've posted their email addresses there. And then finally, of course, there's the website where there's plenty of email addresses to be found. But this takes a lot of work and time, and we really want to automate the process. So what we're going to do is we're going to run a tool that will ask Google for every email address it has discovered for the organization when it does its normal internet scanning. And since Google knows all, it will happily provide us a nice list of accounts that we can use. Then our next step is to do some password guessing to see if any of these accounts contain weak, easily guessable passwords so we can get access to an account that we can use. We want to pick some easily guessable passwords that comply with common password policies that might require a capital letter and a number, for instance. And some of the easiest passwords to guess are the word password, obviously, and any variation of it. Oftentimes people use the changing of the season and the year. and They just change it every time they change their password. Another common one is changing the month and the year. Then there's a local sports team with a favorite player number. There's a company name and a number it's often used. And of course, a work location and a number. But here's the problem. If we take these passwords and use them all at once to guess the password for an account, we could easily lock out the user account and create a lot of noisy locks that might give away to the organization what we are doing. And since we want to do this quietly and under the radar, we need a different approach. And that different approach is called password spraying. It's different because instead of guessing a large number of passwords against one user account, we take one password and guess it against a whole list of user accounts. And then we switch to the next password and so forth. This minimizes the chance of account lockout and it spreads the noise over all these accounts so it seems less obvious that any particular account is being targeted. So here we go. We're going to password spray the accounts that we've harvested. Here's the password sprayer guessing password, password 1, winter 2016, winter 2017, and then it'll pause for just a little bit to make sure it's not super noisy. And we can scroll up and bam, we've got one. The account is Bishop M1 with the password of winter 2017. This is really cool. We want more accounts to password spray. How can we get them? It's easy. The organization's global address book. We can easily use the account that we just cracked and download all the email addresses of the entire organization. So we're going to do that right now. Using the account Bishop M1 Winter 2017, we're going to steal the organization's entire address book from Office 365. Of course, this is highly sped up, but it is every email address. So now there's so many different things that we could do. We could password spray every email address that we've harvested from the global address book and probably gain access to a lot more accounts. But this time, we're going to do something a little different. The name of the user account that we cracked is Matt Bishop. We're the attackers, and on our copy of Outlook, on our computer, we're going to create Matt Bishop's Outlook profile which will give us full access to his email account using the familiar Outlook interface. Since we have his email and password, Office 365 assumes we are him and lets us set up this access. 
We restart Outlook, and when it loads, we see everything in Matt's email, including his calendar and his notes. One thing we can immediately do is search through his email and look for credentials to other resources. So what do we do next? Most of us get a lot of email every day, and managing that email is often a challenge. Microsoft provides us with a great tool in Outlook that allows us to stay organized, allowing us to create specific rules for certain emails. We can move messages from someone to a folder. We can flag a message for follow-up. We can automatically delete certain emails and many other things. But here's the thing. Since we have full access to Matt's email account, any change that we make to his account will be automatically synchronized and stored in Office 365. Because Office 365 assumes we're Matt and we're just at a different location. Any change that we make to his account will also be automatically synchronized to his copy of Outlook on his work computer, even if it's an evil change. So here's what we're going to do. We're the attacker and we have our evil web server with some content on it that we want Matt's computer to run. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use our copy of Outlook with Matt Bishop's profile and we're going to create an evil Outlook rule. And that Outlook rule says that when Matt receives an email with the subject, hacks are all the things. We're instructing Matt's Outlook to go out on the internet to our evil web server and download a program and run it. And when Matt runs that program on his computer, his computer will make a remote control connection to us and we'll have full control over Matt Bishop's computer. All of this is done with Matt Bishop having no idea this occurred in the background. Unless he looked at his rules, he would have no idea that we created this evil Outlook rule. So here's our evil web server, and this is the program that we want Matt to run on his computer. So we're going to copy the link to that program. Now there's an interesting security feature, shall we say, in the Outlook rules wizard, where if you choose to create a rule like we're going to do, to have something automatically run a program or start an application, it will not allow us to pick a remote location, such as our web server, for that file. It will only allow us to choose files off of our local hard drive. So that's kind of a limitation. So to get around that limitation, what we're going to do is we're going to run a simple script that will allow us to create our email subject trigger and allow us to create this rule with our remote location in place and save it as a file. Then we go into Outlook email rules and we just import that file. And now we've bypassed that feature so we have a rule that says after the message arrives with hacks or all the things in the subject, start this program. It will go out to our web server, download that program, and run it. Meanwhile, on Matt's computer, that synchronization has already occurred. If we were actually able to look at his rules and alerts, we would see there's the synchronization. Our evil Outlook rule has synchronized to his copy of Outlook and now when we send him an email with hacks or all the things in the subject his copy of Outlook will go download that file and his computer will run it and that's what we want. So we're ready for launch. On our computer we're going to create an email and send it to Matt Bishop with the subject hacks are all the things. Additionally, what we're going to do is we're just going to put testing please ignore in there in case he actually sees the email and wonders what it's about. Now here's the thing. Matt does not have to read this email for this to be successful. All that has to happen is it has to be successfully delivered to his copy of Outlook and that can happen in the background even if he's not there. And the second that happens our rule triggers and we get a connection to his system. Here's our evil listener waiting for connections and as soon as that email is delivered, we get a connection from Matt Bishop's computer. 
And now all of a sudden we have full remote control of his system. We have access to his account on his computer on the organization's network. And we're ready to go from there. As we have in the past, the first thing we want to do is install a keystroke recorder. That way we can steal any credentials to other resources that Matt accesses and maybe some of his financial information as well. Meanwhile, back on Matt's computer, Matt's busy buying something and it tells us that it's from Bass Pro Shops and he enters his credit card information and we can easily steal those numbers and use that to buy something later. Now that's all fun, but the impact is much more serious if we are able to steal the credentials for access to any of these sites, sites where the organization might be liable for the protection of constituent information. That's why it's so important, first of all, not to use the same username and password on these sites when you do log in, but also to enable two-factor authentication on these sites where it's available and encourage these resources to make that authentication available if it's not. But think about it. If an attacker has just your username and password, say they stole it the same way we stole Matt's, and they logged into this network, they can easily log into your ESS, your human resource record, steal your personal information for identity theft purposes, or better yet, and this is more fun, add an additional bank account as a recipient of your next paycheck. Folks, protecting your credentials is so critical. So before we begin moving around in this network, I'd like to address a common misconception. Most people think that the only way to interact with a Windows system is by logging into it like this, either sitting at your desktop or via remote desktop protocols. But that's not the case. As attackers, we can do just about anything a user can do. We can do it remotely. We can do it at the command line. We can change files, we can configure the computer, we can steal information, and by using the command line, we can be much more stealthy in our activities and do it with elegance. And this brings us right into the subject of lateral movement. See, we have a session on Matt Bishop's machine. So what can we do to access the crown jewels of the organization? We can use Matt's account that we already have, and we can use that to log into other systems. And maybe we can steal someone else's account and then log into other systems with that account. Maybe steal another account. You get the idea. Move around laterally and collect accounts as we go until we finally get access to an account that has access to the crown jewels of the organization. And from there, we're in. We've gotten what we need. Matter of fact, there's a lot of tools that attackers use these days to determine visually exactly where the crown jewels exist in an organization and the easiest path to get there. So after we determine the names of a bunch of computers on this network that we want to connect to, we can take the credential that we already have and use those credentials to get fresh connections from a lot of computers. Look at all those brand new juicy connections all on our way to obtaining something worthwhile for our efforts something maybe we can turn around and sell on the dark web for big money in our next and last section part three of this presentation we will discuss defenses ways that you and i can prevent this kind of attack from being successful and protect our accounts and our information but before we go there's one more thing to do it's scary sometimes how bad guys can access everything, including our webcams and our microphones on our computers. Although we've shown this before, folks still like to see it. And since we're already on this network and have access to computers and microphones and webcams, we'll have a little fun with it this time. Even Mark Zuckerberg understands that this kind of attack isn't preventable, so he was recently pictured where it showed his computer's camera taped over so that nobody can do what we are about to do. I won't go into this tack since it's already in earlier presentations that you can view online, but here's some fun with a camera and microphone of some unsuspecting user's computer. So we got a call from County Council. Okay. And John Smothers is going to be released today, 5 oh, o'clock. Wow. Okay. Doesn't know about it. He's going to be placed on administrative leave pending investigation, which right. means it's going to get, we have to take care of the account and do all the stuff 
that we need to do. Yeah. So, okay. So we need to we need to make sure someone's staying here right past five, so we can take care of this right at five. Yeah. Um, we'll need to disable their account. Yeah. Calling you to reset the password just in case yeah. there's any trickle down from the cloud. We want to make sure that they're not able. He's not able to get in.